Hello everyone, my name is The Ultimate Spy, and welcome to another episode of Reviewed. Reviewed number 174. And today, I am going to be reviewing Paddington 2, the sequel to 2014's Paddington. Dear Aunt Lucy. So what did I think of Paddington 2? Well, I loved it. I mean, it got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't remember if the first one got that, but yeah, it, it's a wonderful film. This movie is amazing. It, it's obviously like an old British cast. I mean, all from the UK, basically. And it has one of the best casts I've ever seen. It's kind of like how Harry Potter had one of the best casts in their movies. Yeah, amazing cast. They, they got some talent, to be honest. They have Sally Hawkins, who was in the first film, The President Herald, but she's also in Godzilla and the follow-up to that. She's a fantastic actress, and then you also have Peter Capaldi, who was obviously the 12th Doctor, among other things. And this is like, in my own eyes, having only seen him in, in this film as a, a non-television appearance, it was his first movie that I've ever seen him in. Amazing, just amazing job. And then Emilia Staunton and Michael Gambon played um, played the uncle and aunts of Paddington. I didn't recognize Emilia Staunton's voice, but obviously she played Umbridge in Harry Potter, and then Michael Gambon obviously played Dumbledore in Harry Potter. And then also Julie Wal Walters is in this one again. She comes back to play Mrs. Bird. I did not realize that she had a Scottish accent. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the way it is. But yeah, um, a lot of a lot of recognizable Harry Potter actors. And then uh, Jessica Hines, she was the nurse in Human Nature from the Blood episode uh, of series three, I think it was, in the Pet Doctor era. Uh, I think she was what Nurse Redgrave or something like that, the, the nurse that fell in love with the the human doctor. And she plays a woman who, I guess, she meets up with uh, Ben Miller's character, and Ben Miller. I, don't, I haven't really seen it in a lot, but I know he was, he played the character of Bo, or that's his last name, in uh, the Johnny English series, or the trilogy, I don't know if they're making more of those, but at this point, trilogy, so that was cool, he put a, he played the colonel, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, because I see it the way it is, it's spelled the way I, sp I pronounce the way it's spelled, sorry, and that's just the way it is, it's my, it's my, 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 uh, my brain works, like, if, if I, if I say the name that makes no sense as it's pronounced, then I, Pronounced the way it's spelled. So he played the, he put the colonel, and then Noah Taylor, he was a surprise. He he was uh, one of the prison mates, and he put he he also played uh, Mr. Bucket in uh, in Charlie the Chocolate Factory. And then the tech guy, I think I can't remember exactly his name. I would look it up. I don't want to do that right now. But he played like the tech guy in the uh, the two Lara Croft Tomb Raider movies, starring Angela and Jolie, like the, the more. Uh, the more, the ones that were based off like the 90s or early 2000s games, or those kind of movies. Not the new one, not the new one with the Lady Shabag Kyder. I do plan on reviewing that eventually. <laughs> that, that, the new movie. Not everyone liked it, but I, I really liked it a lot. And then also, Brendan Gleeson. Now, just like I have my favorite New Zealand actor in Bruce Spence, Brendan Gleeson is also one of my favorite Irish actors. I mean, his son, um, Dom Hall Gleeson, is also Irish, and he plays, uh, and obviously he plays Hux in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, but Brendan Gleeson is most famous for playing Mad-Eye Moody in Harry Potter series, at least, uh, what, three of them? I think, yeah, the three of them, but he played it in three of them, I'm pretty sure. I think it was Gobble of Fire, Order of Phoenix, and then, uh, and then Death and Hallows Part 1. I think that's three movies right there. Uh, I don't think he came back in the second part. Because no, 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 he died, he died, so I, that's correct, he, th three films, three Harry Potter films. So he play, he, he plays a guy named Knuckles McGinty, he, he's just like this, this, um, this chef who makes terrible food, and then, uh, and the Paddington teaches him about how to make marmalade sandwiches, I would never try those, but, uh, they're obviously something the Paddington likes. And then also, uh, Jim Broadman, who, uh, who plays the antique store owner, I can't remember his name, he's known for playing Slughorn, Horace Slughorn, in the Harry Potter series. Obviously, half of Prince and Death House Part 2, I'm pretty sure. Just the two of those. And then Richard Oyedi, I think his name is. Uh, I don't really know much information or anything. I've only I've seen him in like one episode of a show that I tried out from a, you know, in, the, in, the, in a, one of the British sitcoms. And 
he's he's a good actor, and he also is known for playing one of the I guess henchmen in the Box Trolls movie. Uh, he's he's a British actor, and he's he's pretty good actually. To be honest, I, I like his voice. It's a really good voice. And then also Hugh Grant was in this movie. He played the villain. He played the the thief, the guy who was like doing different disguises to get this basically this treasure. Because the whole plot of the movie of the sequel was uh, Paddington they're just into life in London very well, wanting to get a present for his aunt Lucy, who is also a bear, obviously, because the Browns are humans, so that they they just have him to take in the bear, and so he wants to get aunt, his aunt Lucy a present because she's turning a hundred. And so, basically, he finds this pop-up book in an antique shop, and it turns out it costs way too much money, but then this thief, who was played by Hugh Grant, steals it, and he, you know, eternally, he, he, the, the book has the secrets to a treasure in a kind of, like, I don't know, like, carnival game thingy, I don't know exactly how you say it, um, it's just like this thing has, like, a lot of treasure, and he has all these disguises, and it's, it's quite funny. His career started out as, as a dog food commercial thing, and then he became the... A carnival guy, I think. That's how it works. I, I'm not exactly sure. He's kind of show. I think that's some kind of show guy. And then obviously he's after the the treasure that that is from the pop up book. And you know, obviously Pendulum wants that too. So that that was that was great. So yeah, that was. I like this disguise a lot. It was it was it was quite crazy. Like uh, just in general, he had a lot of his little rumors, little disguises, and they're really quite funny. Like. One of them I could have sworn is the exact same outfit that Mr. Toad wears well, in one of the Willis movie, or in the American release, which was a Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I swear it was that. You know, Scrooge, obviously, apparently Braveheart. I haven't seen Braveheart, but I know about it, so that's the thing. But yeah, that's basically how it wor- how it was. He, he was a fun character. You know, I, I, I've only seen him in like one other thing that was like Love Actually. I mean, I know he's in, the, in other things, but that's the only thing I've seen him in, so there you go. And because this movie was released three years after the first movie, obviously everyone who reprises the roles are a little bit older. So, for example, Judy Brown. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just a wow. She has grown into a beautiful young girl. Like, oh my god, she is gorgeous. I mean, she may, I think she might even be wearing like some eyeliner, but like, oh my god, she is gorgeous. I mean, I don't even know how old she is. Like, she's in her teens, but like, wow, she is very attractive. She's going into a very beautiful girl. But that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, I like her. I, I, I like all the characters. They really grown. They really have become more mature. You know, they're they're like, in the movie. It's 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 shown that uh, that she has broken up with the boy. She has uh, moved on from that and sort of her own printing business, which is actually really cool. And then obviously Jonathan, the uh, brother of her, he starts to get into steam trains, but he can't talk about it because it's not cool. So that's cool. I, I like that a lot. I like the fact that that was a thing. And also, that brings me to my favorite scene from the entire movie, for sure. And that's, there's this, uh, there's this, I guess, this businesswoman or whatever. And they basically interview her. They bring her breakfast. And it's so funny because they, they, they bring a tape recorder. And so they basically record everything she says. And then they then get on the phone with, uh, with Hugh Grant's character, Phoenix, his name is. And they relay everything in an orderly fashion, like everything that they want her to say from the recording. They put it into a phone call, and they call Phoenix, which is the again played by Hugh Grant, like who's the the, the the real thief. And so basically, it, it, it's so funny because it's like it's perfectly done, but at the end of it, they accidentally uh, release you know the the um, line where she says you know nice buns by the way, which is obviously referring to the that the buns that, uh, that the woman was given, that they gave her, and it's like, <laughs> it's so funny to me, it's like, oh, thank you, I, 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 never, I never had someone give me a compliment, I had Mr. and Mrs. Buttcheek, <laughs> it was like, it was so funny, I love that, it, it's just hilarious, because it's so well done, like, because, like, both the brother and sister are very good at, um, at recording what the woman said, and then obviously relaying it in a conversation, it's like, Kind of like a prank call, sort of, but like not exactly. It's just, it's just brilliant. I love it. It's fantastic. It's so well done. And they really do a good job of making it sound like she's on the phone with him, and it's just like it's fantastic. I love it. And they, they mess up a little bit because of the, you know, the, the you know, nice buns, <laughs> very nice buns. It's just like really. But speaking of thief, yeah. So the whole movie, a lot of it had to do with Paddington going to new places. Unfortunately, one of them is prison. He gets wrongfully accused of stealing. The pop-up book, 
which is Hugh Grant's character, it's his fault for doing that because he wanted to get a treasure, basically. And so basically, he goes to prison, and that's one of the things that happens to him. It, it, it's unfortunate, but it, it, it turns things around. Like he, you know, the menu is is a is horrible, so you get able to fix it with marble and sandwiches, and it's just it's fantastic, and he makes new friends, and it's just like it's wonderful. But and another funny moment when the Browns are visiting Paddington for the first time because they get monthly visits. Mr. Brown does not like them. Does not like his uh his friends, and so he turns the light off, but does not mute, mute the mute the visit, so they can still hear him, so he basically insults him, and it's like, I'm sorry if I invented you, anyway, <laughs> and, and, uh, and Knuckles is like, the microphone button is over here, and it has the word microphone on it, it's like, really? <laughs> it was great, so they can hear him the entire time, that was fantastic, and then also when, uh, when Paddington gets a job, yeah, that, that's a montage of its own, like, Mod has it, you know, entirely where he's, do, he's trying to earn money and all that stuff, and, uh, you know, he, he, he can't clean well, so he uses his body, and then, uh, it's just, like, it's full of, it's, uh, there's a whole mod about it, it's, it's fantastic, I really like that a lot, it was, it was great, and it, it, it's well made, I mean, I don't know about a Paddington 3, I've heard that they might not do that, because the, the writer director is not returning, because apparently the voice of Paddington is like, I'm not doing it if, if, uh, the writer director doesn't come back, but, you know, never say never, basically. It's the same kind of thing with Guardians 3, where you don't know what's going to happen, and then the last minute, it's like, oh yeah, they, they, they forgive him, so they're bringing him back. So hopefully the same thing will happen with Paddington 3, because I would love to see another one. I don't know what it would be about, but I would love to see that. In general, they had a lot of familiar with Doctor Who actors, and movies like, I feel like with these kind of movies, because it was produced by the same guy who produced Harry Potter, it was a combination of both Doctor Who actors and... Harry Potter actors, which is fantastic. I, I really enjoy seeing those movies where they where they have a lot of actors who are, who are you know, familiar and who are in, in both things. I don't know about both from Doctor Who and from Harry Potter, but the whole prison thing was quite funny because there's a point where uh, Paddington makes a red sock with the prison clothes, and then it ended up becoming uh, you know pink. And then later on, the you know because the food's all better, the prison suddenly like dances around. It's like, what is going on here? And then they make more better food. It's like, what's going on? Some tremendous acting, you know, tremendous talent in terms of the people they were able to cast. I never would have expected they would be able to get so many people to, to be in this movie. So many recognizable actors. I never thought it would be possible just to get everyone here. And again, seeing Peter Capaldi in a, in a role other than the Doctor was just fantastic. I mean, he was my favorite Doctor, but seeing a different role other than the Doctor is just very unique and special. And... I feel like British actors are the best in terms of, of, of what they can do. You know, they're really good. It's just, it's just wonderful, and, and you know, and I, I really enjoyed it. I really had no problem with it. I really didn't. It's funny. It's well made. It's just everything you would expect. That's basically all I'm going to say about Paddington 2. I really didn't have anything else I can talk about besides what I've already said. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give this movie a 10 out of 10. I really had no problems with it. They even had a post credit scene. Where it's like, you know, finally we get to see him being behind bars, but oh, he's doing his own little show thing, which is great. You know, they even had this, they even had this, uh, this band appear out of nowhere, like, on the window washing thing, and then in the prison, it's like, what are they doing there? I don't know what the hell is happening. It's so weird. I don't know. It, it's just like, it's weird. But also, again, plenty of good humor. Plenty of good humor. There's, there's a lot... I, I would be hard if I was talking about the humor, but like they they had plenty of, of really good humor. I really enjoyed it. It was it was fantastic. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Reviewed. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you are new to this channel, subscribe for more episodes of this series and of the series that I do as well as looking content. Also make sure to hit the bell to enable alerts for this annual uploads and I'll be back next week with another episode. Right?